So I'm looking forward to this. Conrad joins us, double World Cup winner, All Black legend. Welcome to the show, mate. Good to be here, Martin. Look, the way that the All Blacks are playing at the moment and our combinations and things, when you and Ma got together and and started to play together, both at, at, at provincial super level and then on to international level, how long did it actually take you before you got to that stage where you really felt you were happy with your combination and that you could get as good as you got? Yeah, a long time. Um, you know, I think when, when we started, we were probably, uh, you know, in competition, if anything, uh, especially for the All Black jersey. Uh, we both probably wanted to be in playing 13, and, and Pana was there at the time as well. So we were all sort of uh, scrapping over what minutes and what spots we could get, and then onto the All Black jersey it was a little bit the same. So uh, that, that, yeah, it certainly uh, wasn't straightforward, and, um, you know, a partnership as it form didn't you know didn't start right away um i think yeah we only started like we obviously started our careers 03 04 and then didn't play together as a 12 13 until uh 08 sort of after the world cup and and then even then it was probably a couple of years before um you know i still sort of remember the coaches sort of talking to us about not just you know they had identified us as a couple individuals who were you know pretty determined and uh, wanted to do well in our own right, but you know, to help ourselves, we really had to look at, as to how we could do it in a partnership and help each other out. And um, yeah, that, that took time, and we'll pro- probably would both say that it was something that was happening the whole whole time. You know, seven years later, we were still uh, trying to perfect it. When did you feel yourself that you were All Black international level? Did it was there was there a time where you really noticed and you thought, yeah, man, I can actually do this on the world stage? Uh, I, I think 2009, um, I remember that year putting in some really good performances and, um, yeah, again, I suppose feedback from the coaches was sort of telling me not just to, um, you know, because then all, all I was trying to do was hold my spot, you know, you, you never relax um, and, and I suppose at that time they were sort of telling me, look, don't worry just about being an All Black, be a great one, be a you know best in the world, which still right to the end I never felt entirely comfortable with. Um, but that's just I suppose a bit of my personality. Uh, but you know I, I say that, and then at the same time, the whole my whole time as a career, you're never entirely comfortable. That that's something that just comes at high, at the highest level. You know you're you're aspiring to be really good and to, to have your position in the team but you're forever looking over your shoulder and um and and i don't think you want to even be comfortable because that's um inevitably when you when you slip off form so uh it's it's a it's a funny area um but certainly yeah it it took time for me to even even look towards um you know being a a great player and 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 being um someone you know worthy of the all black jersey Conrad Smith, All Black Legend with us on the platform. See, people are going to be fascinated in this because you look so calm, relaxed, and looked as though you were born to be there. But the fact that, you know, you're going through different things in your own head and it takes so much time. And it's also interesting to me, you mentioned 2009, because that year we lost three times to South Africa. They came here, they just bombed us, and we couldn't catch a a bloody cold at that stage. And I remember uh, then we went overseas and we played a test, I think it was against France. We played in white jerseys. And you probably won't remember, but you came off the bus and I did an interview with you. And and it was just like... we played so well that day. It was it was almost a, a turning corner moment, wasn't it? After losing five matches that year, it was like hell. Okay, this is what the All Blacks are capable of. Can you can you remember back then? I remember it very well, actually, and and not many other people do. It's it's probably uh, on a personal level, it's probably the one of the better. Well, yeah, it's the best game I've probably ever had in the All Black jersey. Wow. which is funny because we were in white. But um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's yeah, it's always stuck out to me, and and I think as the you know in terms of the team, um, there, there was a bit of a I don't know, landmark moment. Um, you know, we we had come off like you said a, a disappointing um, Tri Nations by our standards. We'd yeah been beaten, and and it's remained probably. You know, I've, I've said this before, like the one time in my career when we as All Blacks felt like we weren't the best in the world. And and that's not an arrogant thing. That's just, um, you know, we had lost other games. We lost Aussie a handful of times, England. Um, but we felt, you know, if we played the game the next day, we'd get it right, we'd win. Whereas that time against South Africa, they had us. You know, they had mm. our number and, and it was tough for us. And uh, a time for a lot of soul searching. And we came out of that. And, you know, a lot of guys that were involved sort of talk about, 
that moment is, is um, setting up, you know, the next sort of, I don't know, six years probably of, of performance that we always would look back at that and couldn't ever be relaxed about what we were doing and, and always trying to stay ahead of what um, other teams were doing in the game. No, this is what frustrates me at the moment. You know, I feel like a lot of criticism directed at the All Blacks. This is only my view. I feel like it lacks historical context, and you know, it's all clickbait stuff. And and you know, and the and the, and the people that are writing and kind of putting the stuff out there are, are mostly in their mid twenties. And, 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 they, and they don't actually apply what needs to be applied. Because with you, you know, people think, wow, what a career, 2011, 2015, two of the best All Black sides ever. And yet you go back only a few years, the 2007 loss. Well, I remember the fallout, and so do you from that. I mean, and the All Blacks were just in a dark hole. And then 2009, so my question being is, when's the point when you kind of, the team needs to get consistent prior to a World Cup? That France thing obviously kick-started the momentum for our side then. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. I don't know if there's any um, magic recipe. If, if there was, yeah, <laughs> there'd, um, there'd be plenty of teams doing it. But I, 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 your point's bang it spot on. It's, um, you know, that those experiences are, are what shape you. Um, you know, you, you, you know it's, well, it's well said that you learn from your losses. So those, those sort of things, um, provided, you know, you do the work and you take all the right lessons, they, they can... Um, you can reap huge benefits from that, and and, and that's all. Um, like you say about the team at the moment, uh, going through some hurt, some pain, and and that's good, man. Like I, I'd be worried if we were <laughs> losing test matches and and sort of sweeping it under the carpet and thinking, oh, there's no issue, no issue. Like I, I enjoy, or I know it's not easy, but I, I'm I'm glad that you know we're, there's, there's people still getting stuck into the All Blacks because it means we care. Yes. Um, we care about the team and, and I know the guys in the camp, they'll care more than anyone. So they'll be doing everything they possibly can to um, to sort this out. And, and these sort of tests like this one, obviously now that coming up this Saturday, it's going to be a massive um, occasion for them and, and they'll be a lot better for it. A wounded All Black side is a fantastic All Black side, I've always believed. Conrad Smith, two World Cups with us. Look, and I don't mind the criticism, uh, criticism either. I'm, I'm quick to put the hobnails on, but I, you know, I just love the team. And 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 I, what I don't do is get personal on it. And when I read and hear the stuff that you know, like there was an article published the other day calling Ian a clown and stuff like that. I mean, that's just so unnecessary. See, you went through the era without the real bitch side of social media, and I bet you're glad of that. Yeah, I, I no doubt, and and you know you're talking to someone that still doesn't do social media. Good so on you, mate. I, I, uh, and you know, even at the end of my career when it was becoming so popular, you know, I just I shook my head and wondered why so many players, you know, got involved in it when all I all I saw was the, the negativity and the downside, and see a whole lot of upside, and I still don't. So that, that that's just me. But um, look. Uh, you're right. It's it's um, it can get pretty nasty at the moment, and, and what you have to deal with is different than anything I had to and, and the team had to. But um, yeah, that's hopefully you know, that, that's life. The challenges they face, look, what I faced, is different than the 1980s. And you know, you can go through the history of the All Blacks and, sure. and say the same thing. So they've, they've just got to adapt to it and um, move on. I'm sure they will. It's uh, it's, a, it's a tough time, but um, look, they've, I've got good people there, and you know, I've got a lot of faith in them. You know, and also your personal experience at the time, I mean, you can't draw real parallels, but with Ted under all of that pressure, and, and, and you know, I was one that was actually saying, look, there's no way he can be um, reappointed in the position, and I deep my own words afterwards as well. But, I mean, when you're in inside that bubble, do you take much notice of the noise outside, or, or is it more important what that you're just focused on exactly who is around you and what you can actually personally do to change it? Yeah, I, I, I mean, you can't help but notice it, but at the same time, yeah, I mean, that's the good thing being in the camp because you know there's one way to answer it all back and you put a performance out um, on, on the park the following week and that, that is the beauty of, of sport that you can do that. Um, and, look, and that's the important thing. Like, Hopefully, um, as, as I say, I'm, I'm sure that's what they're doing. They're focusing on what they can control and, um, you know, doing everything right so that a performance can, um, you know, shut a lot of people up and, and make sure we're, we're all heading in the right direction the right towards a, a World mm. Cup next year. And, yeah, that, that, that's, um, you know, that's just what you've got to do. 
Conrad Smith with us. And don't forget, mate, that in 2011 and 2015, we won two World Cups. But it's not as though we breezed through, got 100 not out with the bat and then bowled them out five for 20, is it? I mean, let's be honest about it. You know, 211 was a nightmare for tension. And even in 215, that semi-final, the Yarps got close to us. So that's there are margins, aren't there? I, this, I just want people to understand that it's not a carpet ride every time we, we, we watch our 15 go out there. No, for sure. And, and look, I, I genuinely, and I've said this like well before this um, series, but the level of, of rugby around the world now is far closer than it's ever been. And, and that's great for the game. It's, it's, it's hard as an All Black fan because we want our All Blacks to be miles ahead and um, winning every game or winning 90%. But, but the reality is, you know, you, you only need to watch the club rugby around the world, you know, which I do now with, in my role and, and, and the, the level they're playing at, um, again, it's not nice to admit sometimes is on a par with Super Rugby at least and I, I don't think I, you would have said that 10 years ago or you wouldn't and that transferred into, I think, the yep. international performances. So what you're seeing now is, is just a reflection of the rugby getting played around the world and um, for things like World Cup, it's, it's great because I... I genuinely don't know, you know, I reckon there'd be five teams. Yeah, I reckon there'd be five or six, yeah. Mm. Eight. I reckon there's eight that could make a final, wow. seriously. Um, so, and I never say that before, so, like I say, it's it's, it's not easy when you want your black team to win all the time, but sometimes, like, you, like you're saying, you, you just need to step back and um, be a little bit more realistic about the... The, you know, the environment we're in and, and where rugby's at on a global stage. Great for rugby, the standard of the teams, but the rules right now, look, the head contact stuff, you know, I, I accept and I, and, and I know the reasons why. World rugby are petrified of an NFL-style lawsuit. You've got to protect the players. You have to protect um, their ongoing health, all of that kind of stuff. But, Conrad, try and explain to me and everyone else who's a fan, including yourself, mate, this deliberate knock-on yellow card stuff. I mean, I don't know that. I didn't realise that a TMO had ESP, mate. I mean, how the hell do you decide in someone else's mind whether it's a, a, a deliberate knock-on? And even Sean Stevenson from New Zealand, Marty, trying to sort of tap the ball forward. If he catches it, he goes under the post. But he can't. He doesn't get a foot to it. He gets a yellow card. I'm confused about that. Yeah, I... <laughs> I want to be careful what I say here. So sure. Obviously, you know, my, my work now, I deal a lot and I try and represent players on, on things like this and, and laws is, is one of the areas I work in. And, you know, it, it's a, a bit of a bugbear of mine at the moment because I, I agree and I take what you're saying and what has been said by a lot of, I say, the practitioners in terms of the coaches and players. Like, what is a deliberate knock-on? I, I'd argue that a lot of what we've seen and it's what it's getting yellow carded is, is not, and there's a genuine attempt to catch the ball. That's, um, you know, that, those are the conversations we've got to have uh, with, with referees, um, you know, and the lawmakers, and, and just get a general consensus. And, and if there were, was to be a criticism, you know, in the past, and even obviously now, it's, it's that the people at World Rugby, and, and, and there isn't those conversations happening enough. Um, so, look, ho- hopefully, like I say, I'm... I'm I am involved in these these sorts of things, and, and we can bring this up and, and sort it out. And, and it's not just the the knock on; it's it's what's getting uh, receiving a yellow and red card for head contact and a whole range of other laws. And we want the game of rugby to be um, you know it's a beautiful game. We want it to be enjoyed by everyone. And um, look, you you got to make it easy to understand. And um, when when it's not being understood, it's not, it's not good for the game. So it is something we need to sort out. Okay, finally then, so what is it? I know that you're working with players in international rugby, so is it an official capacity? I mean, how how does that unfold? Yes, I'm uh, with international rugby players. So we're a player association, so we bring together um, all our members, obviously. Well, there's about 13 of the unions that have player associations, um, New Zealand being one of them. And then on, on international issues, we, we sort of bring the members and, and try and represent all the players globally, which is quite a challenge, but, um, you know, around... Particularly the laws of the game, that's a world rugby issue. So that's where international rugby players, you know, we, we um, represent the guys and, and girls who are playing and, and try and give our input on you know, the, the laws, but also competitions, the World Cup, Sevens, Women's Rugby, which is controlled a lot by um, World Rugby. And, yeah, that, that, that's been my role for the last couple of years. Um, I, I was obviously involved heavily with New Zealand rugby players while I was here, and it's, it's work I enjoy. So it's been it's been good taking the boots off and, and still being involved in the game in, in this capacity.